so many things happening uh, in the news cycle today. Obviously, monitoring the manhunt up in Maine uh, with a mass shooter up there. Of course, we finally have a Speaker of the House and Mike Johnson from Louisiana. And the UAW coming to an agreement, at least tentatively, with Ford. So that's one of the Detroit Big Three. And we got our Clay Como plant uh, right up here in the Kansas City area. That uh, They weren't shut down. They weren't on strike. But obviously... There are impacts all around the region if they uh, end this strike here sooner rather than later. It's only been six weeks. Daniel Howes, senior editor, uh, business and columnist as well for the Detroit News, is joining us on KCMO. All right, Daniel. So what happened? Uh, Why do we finally have an agreement here between at least Ford and the UAW? Uh, Because the UAW uh, kept squeezing, uh, to be very blunt. I mean, we refer to it here in Detroit as the heat and light show. They turn up the heat until the company sees the light. And I, I, I think that's pretty much what happened here. There's probably a, uh, an overt or, or at least an implied threat that they would probably take out another pickup truck plant and continue to, to up the pressure. And I think Ford wanted to get a deal. You, you, I mean, in this situation, you want to be the first company because you get an opportunity to shape the deal uh, to your benefit uh, and to the, of course, to the UAW's benefit, uh, but that deal then, that contours of which can be shopped, in this case, to General Motors and to Stellantis, um, to try and, and wrap this whole thing up in a bow. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very, it's a very rich deal. Um, Chuck Browning, the vice president of uh, the Ford department, was quoted uh, last night as saying that uh, one year, I think, was was of gains for the workers, uh, members rather, were, uh, was equivalent to all of the 2019 contract, financially speaking. Hmm. So this is a, this is a very rich deal. It's 25% pay raises over four years with an 11% gain in the first year. Um, so it's a, it's very lucrative. They maintain, uh, healthcare. There were some improvements to, to retirement, whether you're on a, a pension. So you'd be a, a more, a, a longer tenured legacy worker or you're on a 401k, someone who was hired after 2007, 2008. Um, so it's been, I think, improvements all the way around. They got a right to strike um, over plant closures, which is very new, uh, and that could be problematic. Um, I think the union is trying to play uh, uh, play a defense by playing a pretty aggressive offense here and uh, because I think there's a real concern that in the life of this contract, Potentially, uh, you could see um, some powertrain plants be taken out of uh, rotation. Mm. But a lot of that has to do with what happens with electrification. And the signs as we go into this agreement suggest that electrification is not coming nearly as quickly as the companies had been planning. So there's a lot of scaling back of of some of their electrification plans at the moment. So, Daniel, who, um, what I'm hearing there is that you would suggest in this deal, it sounds like the UAW comes out the winner rather than Ford? Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. Um, uh, you know, if, the, if these deals track uh, the way um, Sean Fain and Chuck Browning last night laid out, uh, I think that they're going to be a major winner. I think the real question uh, here in Detroit is at what cost and not, not just a financial cost, but it was a very acrimonious deal, uh, uh, set of negotiations. Sean Fain used, uh, Facebook and, uh, and online and, and a v- pretty modern, a very modern communication strategy, uh, to push back, to belittle executives, um, to mock, uh, Bill Ford, the chairman of, of Ford Motor Company, whose name is, as you know, on the building. Um, and I think that has had an impact in this town, uh, regardless of where people sit. I think there've been hourly workers who are very proud of working for what they call Fords here in town, um, who aren't uh, keen on demonizing the Ford family. Hmm. Uh, but that was, that was the, uh, the, the price. I mean, I, I wouldn't be the first person to say that when it came to public statements, Sean Fain, who's clearly has a, a very, left view of, of economic justice view of a lot of this is also very Trumpian in the way in which he uh, goes after opponents and uh, and does it publicly. And uh, that's not something we've done here uh, through negotiations, even though we've had some really nasty strikes over the years. And 
some some real long ones, but uh, it's it's kind of changed the the deck. And for a long time, the companies, and I think even to right now, aren't quite sure how to handle it. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Daniel House, Detroit News, is here on KCMO. So uh, the competitive landscape. I mean, what does this do when you look at the prices of these vehicles? And I get they're going up across the board, but. Uh, these companies already had the highest labor costs in the industry. We know that the Toyotas, the Hondas, the Kias of the world are getting more competitive every year. What does this do long term? It's a great short term win, but are there long term potentially negative ramifications to this for these car companies? As heck, we were talking about it this morning. The price of the you know base level suburban is now fifty seven thousand dollars. So how does mm-hmm. this play out for the for the business side? Well, you've got a couple points you raised there. One is vehicles are going to be even more expensive. Uh, your, your labor costs go up. Labor is a five to eight percent component of of the uh, of the cost of a vehicle, but it is it, it is a very important and it's a variable component because your competitors, to your point, don't have those kind of costs and they're all non-union and they have much lower costs. So costs are going to go up. Uh, price of the vehicles is going to continue to, to ratchet up because we've got more expensive money, as most of your listeners know. Um, and so I think on that side, it's going to be an issue in terms of competitiveness. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. And uh, Sean Fain and the leadership of today's UAW kind of wave aside the competition. You bring up being competitive and they say that's a race to the bottom. That's a race to the bottom. Well, it's not necessarily a race to the bottom because it's do you win you know, on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. And I think it's going to be a bigger challenge for them uh, going forward, uh, particularly when you have a per hour labor cost that is dramatically higher. Going in, they were 65 bucks an hour compared to 55 for the transplants and 45 for Tesla. There are some estimates that those numbers could get close to uh, 100 or even if they gave the UAW everything they wanted, it would be far north of 100 bucks an hour. Hmm. Uh, now they obviously didn't get everything they wanted. It appears, um, so we don't know where that number is going to net out. I mean, trust me when I tell you, they know what that number is because they run all that that analysis. And the final thing I would say is, Ford particularly has learned a very valuable and very harsh lesson in these negotiations, and that is, they paid a price in these negotiations for being the company that builds all of its pickup trucks in the United States that employs more auto workers than any other auto company in America. And they don't have their production hedged in in Canada and Mexico to the extent that their two rivals do. Uh, And that's going to be an issue going forward uh, because you become exposed to a a single labor contract or a single, single labor union in one country when you are doing all of your production of your most valuable vehicles in one country that is and yeah and that and that you know that's not a popular view and it's not popular politically but from a business perspective you you know you 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 need to hedge your bets and their two major competitors have huge production facilities in mexico for example Hmm. and um how that plays out i don't know Uh, i don't think you're going to get a clarity on that soon but I did have one person say to me that if you drove by the headquarters of, of the three companies and you see lights on late at night, that's not bargaining teams uh, working on the contract. That's restructuring teams figuring out how they're going to restructure the company in the next couple of years. Wow. Wow. So, great. Yeah, that's great insight. These things, these things don't just happen in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Daniel House, senior editor, uh, columnist with the Detroit News, giving us that perspective as uh, Ford and – the UAW have tentatively agree, agreed to a deal here. So now we're watching the other uh, two big three automakers, GM and Stellantis. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for fitting us in on a busy morning up there in Detroit. We appreciate it. You bet. All right. That is um, good stuff out of him.